students today i'm going to cover types of clauses in sentences so i will cover sentences clauses types of sentences on the basis of structure types of sentences on the basis of function and the objective of this lecture is that you will be able to analyze types of sentences in any text what is a clause or a sentence a group of related words that has a subject and a predicate that is a subject and a verb is known as a clause or a sentence when it gives a complete meaning if there is incomplete meaning then that is usually known as a clause it means that a sentence will always have will give a complete idea or a complete meaning whereas there is a possibility that idea might not be complete in a clause if there is any other group of related word that does not have a subject or and a verb combination then it means it's a phrase now there are two types of clauses independent clause and dependent clause in independent clause there is a subject a verb and it gives a complete sense for example mary plays tennis whereas in dependent clause there is a subject and a verb and a verb but it gives incomplete idea like for example mary plays tennis because mary plays tennis this addition of because is giving an incomplete sense and it need another clause to give a complete sense now on the basis of a structure there are four types of sentences simple sentence compound sentence complex sentence and compound complex sentence Now here you can see the chart that a simple simple sentence has only one independent clause and no dependent clause whereas in a compound sentence there can be two or more independent clauses and again no dependent clause in a complex sentence there will be only one independent clause or maybe sometimes two and a dependent clause can be one or more in co compound complex sentence there can be two or more independent clauses and one or more dependent clause a simple sentence is when there is a subject and a predicate like for example mary plays tennis this mary is a subject and plays tennis is predicate tom and mary play tennis this tom and mary though it is uh, there are two subjects here which is known as a compound subject but it will act as a single subject so this is also a simple sentence tom and mary play tennis and swim this is a compound predicate but again this is a simple sentence because there is a compound subject one subject and a predicate second type is compound sentence a compound sentence also has a subject and a predicate but there are two sentences which has com which give complete meaning and which has subject and predicate and both of them are linked together with coordinating conjunction like for example tom swims and mary plays tennis so tom swims is one sentence and mary plays tennis is another sentence and these two sentences are joined together with the help of coordinating conjunction and these are the coordinating conjunctions which are commonly uh, recognized as fan boys or commonly can easily be remembered by fan boys for and nor but or yet so now if you talk about punctuation then after the first independent clause and before coordinating conjunction there will be a comma like for example tom swims comma and mary plays tennis compound sentence also has conjunctive adverbs like for example moreover however otherwise and therefore for example over here you can see that bob is handsome is one independent clause and he is rich is another independent clause and these two independent clauses are linked together with conjunctive adverb moreover so when this is the case then there will be a semicolon after the first independent clause and after conjunctive adverb there will be a comma basically conjunctive adverbs 
are sometimes called floating adverbs because they can be positioned at the beginning, in the middle or at the end. For example, Bob is handsome. He is moreover rich. He is rich moreover. So this is floating. Can come in the beginning, in the middle or at the end. The third type is complex sentence. Now look at this example. Bob is popular even though he is ugly. Now in this sentence, Bob is popular is an independent clause and he is ugly is a dependent clause. And these two sentences, or these two clauses are linked together with subordinating conjunction even though. It can be written in this way as well, even though can come in the very beginning. Even though Bob is ugly, he is popular. Means dependent clause can come first and independent clause can come later in the sentence. But there will always be a subordinating conjunction for joining together an independent clause and a dependent clause. Independent and dependent clauses are joined together with the help of these subordinating conjunctions even though, when, because, unless, whereas. And these subordinating conjunctions are added to adverb clauses. So when the main clause is first, it is usually not followed by a comma. But when adverb clause is first, then it, it is followed by a comma. Like for example, even though Bob is ugly, comma, he is popular. So when adverb clause is first, then there will be a comma, otherwise it's not necessary. The fourth type is compound complex sentence. My, look at this example. Mike is popular because he is good looking but he is not very happy. So there are multiple dependent and independent clauses linked together with the help of subordinating and coordinating conjunctions. Now the next type of sentences are on the basis of function. On the basis of function there are four types. Declarative sentence, exclamatory sentence, interrogative sentences and imperative sentences. Declarative sentences states an idea. They end up with a period. For example, the problem with the gene pool is that there is no lifeguard. So this is simple statement or simple sentence. Whereas exclamatory sentences shows a strong emotions or some uh, excitement is there they end up with an exclamation mark. For example, what a mess this room is or the cake is ruined. The third type is interrogative sentence which ask a question. As you would expect, they end with a question mark. Why is, for example, why is it possible to tickle someone else but not to tickle yourself? And a number fourth type is imperative sentence in which there is some order or direction or maybe a request and it can end with a full stop, a period or an exclamatory mark. Like for example, sit down and listen or fasten your seat bells when the sign is illuminated. So that's all for the type of sentences. Thank you so much.